So the effect of metformin is thought to be partially mediated by the gut microbiome. That microbial based therapeutics for developing personalized treatments in diabetes has been looked at in several studies. The mechanisms thought um, to be at hand include regulation of the gut microbiota. And this has um, been shown at a couple different levels with, as we've um, said earlier, whether a patient has, develops C. difficile and they do a fecal transplantation versus interventions to incorporate um, pro prebiotics to get to the tar target of the microbiome. So in the process of appreciating a dysbiotic gut microbiota, we are looking at pro-inflammatory cytokines, restoring, restoring gut barrier function, as well as protecting cells, therefore improving glycemic control. Hi, my name is Julie Kirk. I'm a pharmacist and a board certified pharmacotherapy specialist. First, the gut microbiome or biota is from the mouth down to the end of the colon at the anus. It's a community of microorganisms in the digestive tract, about six pounds, made up of a hundred trillion microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. The collective genomes of the microorganisms in a particular environment is the microbiome. So what's in the colon should be different than what's in the small intestine. The community of microorganisms themselves is the microbiota. When we look at the gut microbiome and biota collectively, the big phyla, namely Bacteroietes and Firmicutes, compose greater than 90% but there's a multitude of bacteria, Acinetobacteria, Proteobacteria, and many more. 26 key bacteria are linked to obesity. There's decreased levels of H. pylori, increased levels of leptin associated in hormones, and the risk of enteric infection, gut inflammation, and effects on host metabolism. As a certified diabetes educator and specialist, I've spent a lot of time with metformin, I'm interested to talk to you about metformin in the gut microbiome. When we look at dysbiosis in diabetes, there's a pathogenic cascade that occurs where there's an increase in gram-negative species associated with a high-fat diet. And this can lead to translocation of bacterial liposaccharides, or LPS, into the bloodstream. In diabetes specifically, there's also a reduction in butyrate that small chain fatty acid producer that is so important in the whole gut microbiome that we described earlier. These are the main consequences of diabetes-associated dysbiosis that affect the gut wall integrity, leading to endotoxemia and chronic inflammation. The reduction in the butyrate level, that short chain fatty acid, has been shown to lead to insulin resistant because of a reduction in good old GLP, glucagon-like peptide one pathway, the activation of fatty acid oxidation and in thermogenic energy expenditure also plays a role. Insulin resistance and chronic inflammation is worsened by dysbiosis and is accelerated in the diabetes clinical picture. So when we look at the effect of butyrate and the specific bacteria that's in the middle column, we get an appreciation that metformin works in a couple of different ways. You're going to come to appreciate that Metformin modulates gut microbiome, and we think that it plays a role in the whole metabolism of the drug. And so when we're looking at controlling hyperglycemia and improving glucose tolerance, um, part of the intestinal discomfort is thought to be what's going on at the gut level with metformin in the cascade of increase in the short chain fatty acid, lipid fermentation, sulfite reduction, LPS production, and mucin degradation. Likewise, um, we're hoping for outcomes and improvement in glucose, fasting blood sugar, A1C, and serum bile acids. The gut microbes influence human energy metabolism. The microbiota com composition influences response to chemotherapy and immunotherapy. The microbiome defines glucose response to food. So dietary fiber intake influences gut microbiota composition. We know supplementation promotes colonization of protective intestinal microflora and maturation of the gut microbiota.
protective bacteria, specifically bifidobacterium, and a negative effect on potential pathologic microorganisms such as Bacteroides, Clostridium, and others, all has an interplay, which we'll talk more about in probiotic. Now, the effects of probiotics on glucose metabolism has been studied widely. In this meta-analysis, data from 30 randomized controlled trials of well over 1,800 patients were evaluated on the effects of probiotic supplementation on glycemic control in type 2 diabetes. The probiotic supplementation significantly decreased fasting glucose, insulin, A1C levels, and insulin-resistant HOMA scores. Probiotics was more beneficial in subgroups, Caucasians, those with higher body weights, and supplementation, supplementation specifically of bifidobacterium probiotics was more beneficial. An example of a professional-grade supplement that one might consider is called ProBiomed 100. The American Academy of Functional Health is not affiliated with any supplement company, but this is an example of a supplement that has a high potent probiotic with 10 researched probiotic strains. It's very important when you're choosing a probiotic that you look at the specific components and the colony forming units. You want them all listed out. You don't want a product that just gives you a one line combination. So here you see in this pro product, there's several different strains of lactobacillus, over many billions of, of, of colony forming units, and then the bifidobacterium. Those are two key players um, in the probiotic spectrum that you wanna consider. When we look specifically more at metformin users, they found that there was exhibited changes in the abundance of certain taxa, increased levels of butyrate producers of the short chain fatty acid and mucin degradating acromycinia mucinophilia. The increases in E. coli abundance and number of the short chain fatty acid producing bacteria was found in improved gut epithelial health and oral altered bile acid metab metabolism contribution to glucose lowering. So metformin in combining um, the probiotics with metformin was investigated in 14 randomized control studies of over a thousand patients where they combined the treatment and the probiotic strain and daily dose was varied depending on the patient and um, their gut um, microbiota that was studied. There was a lower odds ratio of gastrointestinal adverse effects, lower fasting glucose, and A1C in the probiotic treatment groups. The reason this is important is because we know that a large portion, over a third of patients or more, are going to have GI distress with metformin. And in fact, most patients will have some form of GI distress um, for a short period of time, if not a longer duration, with metformin. And so we think the gut microbiome is um, at ha hand here. And we know, again, metformin modulates the gut microbiome and has a specific effect on um, what's going on with the glucose and A1C.